Jezus widział, jaką tragedią jest grzech. Dlaczego więc nie potępiał grzeszników, a my tak często lubimy to robić? Well, the scripture, the scriptures clearly say that Jesus came to save, not to condemn anyone. You know, all through the Bible we have great examples of very large sinners that committed many, many sins, and they were never condemned. As I mentioned earlier, you know, the life of David, King David, was a, a, a life filled with all kinds of sin, and yet he had a heart for God, and the Lord blessed him in every way. He made him the king of Israel because he loved the Lord. He fell, he made mistakes, but he always went back to God and asked for forgiveness. And God doesn't condemn us if we look for forgiveness. Every example in the Bible, if you go to the New Testament, who was the first one to see Jesus when he was raised from the dead? Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene was a prostitute. And most people wouldn't even want to speak to her. But God loved her because she loved God so much. It isn't that God's afraid of sin. He doesn't get embarrassed because someone commits sin. He's only offended when someone doesn't ask for forgiveness. It's the difference between Peter, the rock, and Judas. Peter, even after being with Jesus for years, denied him. He sinned. He rebelled against Jesus. But when he came to his senses, he repented. Where Judas, being with Jesus for a long time, he rebelled against Jesus. He turned Jesus in. And when he saw his sin, he didn't repent. He went out and committed suicide. Just what the devil wants us all to do. What we need to know about God and his ways is that he's not afraid of the sinner. He loves the sinner. He calls them to repentance. And when we repent, he forgives us and wants us to be with him. That's the kind of wonderful God we have. You don't ever have to be afraid of God. He's a good God and he loves his people. Amen. Amen. First, <clears throat> Jesus does offer his saving sacrifice, his death, for, for all mankind. But he offers it as a gift. And it's a gift we're allowed to accept or refuse, like any gift from anybody. We can, we can receive it and take it, or we can leave it there. And because there's the problem of sin. We have to somehow be brought into right relationship with God. We have to have something to pay for our sin, and that's Jesus' death. But we have to accept it. Another way of looking at the question is, that, is what's going to happen in heaven? In heaven, it's not going to be just one big party where we all do our own thing. Heaven means being before God, in the sight of God, in union with God. And nothing that isn't good can, can be before God. It'd be destroyed. And we have to unite our will with God's. And we do that through accepting Jesus as our Lord, not just our Savior, but our Lord and Master. And so, if we, Jesus gives us that choice. Do we want to do things His way or do it our own way? And if we want to do it our own way, he lets us do it that way. But then it's better we don't go to heaven because we'd be destroyed. It's actually better we go to hell. Well, the reason I do missionary work in Poland and in several other countries that really the people are Catholic or at least Christian is that there's a spiritual life that all Christians need to grow in. You don't just become a Christian and stay dormant. There's a growth process and we feel that we have a call on our lives to bring Catholics, all Christians, to a deeper walk with Jesus Christ. And in particular I teach a lot on spiritual gifts. The church has been very negligent in using some of the spiritual gifts over the last few years. And we feel that God has called us as a team of people to go out and 
encourage people to be open to the new spiritual gifts and the great outpouring of the Holy Spirit that happens at Pentecost should be happening every day in the, our churches. And so that's one of our calls as missionaries is to go out to all the world and spread that one particular part of the gospel. There is so much depth to coming to know the fullness of Christ. We'll never know the fullness of God. So all of us need to have missionaries come to us, no matter where we are, and teach us the part of God that they know about and, and in a depth. And we can all grow together to see the fullness of Christ, which we're all looking for, whether we're missionaries or we're just the average Catholic. We always want more. Amen. Don. We face many difficult decisions each day in our life. Uh, how do we know what is right and what's wrong to do? Well, God never made a map for everyone to follow so that He controls every single step that we take. Again, it's our relationship with Jesus Christ that's going to give us an understanding of God's will in our lives. So we all instinctively know when there's something really evil or something really good in our lives. And we should repel the evil and be drawn to the good. But there are little questions that are kind of gray areas that we're not sure. Should I do this or shouldn't I do that? And the only way that we can feel secure in that is if we have a good prayer life, a good relationship with God on a daily basis. And the other thing that I want to tell people, the important thing that people all need to know, is that God doesn't get angry when we make mistakes. There is a right and a wrong in every situation, but it isn't like God is waiting for us to make mistakes. He allows us to make mistakes, but then in His loving kindness draws us into the truth. So what we do is we want to do the will of God, and if we really want to do the will of God, in some senses we're going to do the will of God. And when we make errors, He'll compensate for us and bring us back to the right path. As long as we're in that prayer relationship, we have nothing to fear. We have a loving Father. Amen.